and I'm gonna go down to the sales, which is like the customer center on the left hand side. And then let's go into the customers, close up the boogie, and I'm gonna look at the open invoices up top. If you're in the business view, by the way, that would be in the get paid and pay center. And then in the get page, you've got your customers here. So there's your customers. So we can sort by those open invoices and down below we had, uh, is this, did I click off the open invoices? There we have it. So Anderson Guitars is one that uh, we sent an invoice out for. And so now the next step is to receive the payment. We could do that here. We could go into Mr. Anderson there and then select the invoice here where we could either send a reminder, we could send statements to Mr. Anderson, or when we get the payment, we can go to receive payment here. We can also hit the plus button and say we go to receive payment and then enter Anderson and uh, it'll populate or try to pull in that invoice. Now, note, just take a quick look at our flow chart over here. Remember, we're on the sales cycle now, which if we're on the sales cycle, the easiest sales cycle would be like gig work, meaning we just get paid by YouTube. We possibly use the deposit form to make the sale. On a cash-based system that is not dependent on the bank, we can then use a sales receipt would be used when we have a register oftentimes, and that would still be a cash-based system. Here, we're in the kind of system that we had to bill the client. So we did work first. The idea would be we do the work first, we bill the client expecting to be paid at some future point. We already made the invoice. That means accounts receivable went up and sales went up. Now we're gonna to go to the receive payment. Now remember the options on the receive payment. If we got paid, we could deposit it from here directly into the checking account. And it's more likely that that would be a feasible strategy than using the sales receipt because when we receive a payment on an invoice, it's likely that we get paid with an electronic transfer or possibly a check. Two formats of payments that will typically be shown on the bank statement for just that amount, meaning we're less likely to be combining payments together and then depositing them together as we are when we're at a check register, for example, where we get paid by cash or by credit card. So, so I could put this directly into the checking account here oftentimes for many companies, but I still might get being paid by cash or by credit card. And even if I weren't, if I deposit with the receive payment directly into the checking account, then in the checking account detail, I will receive a re I will see a receive payment form for an increase to the checking account. And if I if I group my payments together and then deposit them with a deposit form, then I will see the payments all as a deposit. So I kind of like that better in in any case as a general system. Then with the bank feeds, you will be matching the bank feeds to the deposit or doing a bank reconciliation matching it out. Remember that if you have the bank feeds, as we'll talk about in a future course or section, you could match the bank feeds possibly to the invoice itself or to the receive payment. But usually people, if on an accrual system, will probably follow the whole system through, make the deposit on their end, use the bank feeds to double check in a reconciliation type of system.